What's up, guys? Welcome to Coast to Coast. I'm joined by Matea Mayorga. I'm Robert Bentulin. Going to talk about uh, Wemby today, some uh, Miami Heat summer league standouts, NBA summer league standouts in general, and also uh, the Dame situation. We have another update with uh, Cronin, the GM for Portland. With all that said, what's up, Mateo? It's good to be back, my friend. You know, the summer league is in full effect. We finally caught this uh, freak Wembanyama. It's it's good to be here again. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. Same. It was nice to watch uh, Wemby get back at it. Uh, it's really been some uh, pretty interesting uh, storylines in summer league in terms of players. Uh, and with that said, let's get right into it. So Wembanyama didn't have, quote unquote, the best game in his first uh, debut. He had five blocks, I believe nine points. Um, and he was, you know, we talked about last last week how he was very, very hyped coming in. We talked about how a lot of people like Woj said he's the greatest prospect in sports history. Uh, we also mentioned that some people believe he could be the third, be- the, the best player in three years, uh, so on and so on. You just put out a tweet that uh, Kenny Smith could see him being the MVP in four seasons, I believe it was. Um, so there's a lot of high expectations. But with all that said, he did come out in the second game and he absolutely balled. He had 20, 27 points. 12 rebounds and three blocks. And uh, there's been reports now that uh, the Spurs are going to shut him down for the rest of summer league. So that's the last game we get to see him play for summer league before really the regular season starts. So I'll give you the floor first. What was your impression on Wemben Yama's second game? And we'll talk about expectations in a second, but let's just talk about his game first in the second game. Did you get a chance to watch that? Of course, you know, certainly uh, much better, you know, at least on the stat sheet than the first game where he was, two of 13 from the field and you know his biggest disadvantage the entire evening was his lack of strength you know there were moments in this uh, other game against the trailblazers where his his lack of strength was also you know a deterrent to him but he did score 27 points but to tell you the truth too much outside shots for my taste for a guy that big and I, i've said it before I, I think a guy like him goes to these uh uh so many outside shots because he doesn't have the strength to go where he wants to at will in inside the lane. And th- th- that's not a good thing, but you know, last ge- that, in the last game, he didn't have, um, I think an assist, but in the first game, I-, I saw some, you know, great passing chops, like specific, like one possession where I think he got the ball after a defensive rebound and he was uh, advancing up the court and he hit someone with yeah. it for a or Like he's got some great vision. And I, I think that's his, his greatest asset. If, if he's around players who actually are capable of putting the ball in the hoop, they're going to make his job easier because, you know, defenses won't be able to load up on him. But again, like I, I look at him like a project, not this, you know, generational freak who's going to come in day one, like John Hollinger says, and, you know, totally wreck, you know, you know what in the league that's, that's, that's ludicrous. And now Kenny Smith, <laughs> He pointed out on the Heat's broadcast with the Phoenix Suns on their summer league game said he's going to be the MVP in year four. He was actually challenged in this question because they were talking about what Isaiah Thomas said. Zeke, uh, former bad boy, was saying he's going to be like a defensive player of the year by year five, which is still a lot to ask because he'd be only 24 years old. That's still very young in the league. But Kenny answered with by saying he's going to be the MVP. That to me is, you know, unnecessary to put on that guy because by year four, again, 23 years old, like you have to be a a historic player, you know, to win the award at that age. You know, this is this is something, you know, done by guys a little older who've established a little bit more seniority. But, you know, again, going back to the last game, Rob, he showed some things, but it's we, we can't overreact because it's low level competition. And, you know. A lot of these uh, smaller players, you know, are not going to be, you know, rotation guys. Say yeah, basically. exactly. Listen, I'm going to uh, I'm going to give women Yama credit. He has a lot of pressure on him, as we noted. And to come out the second game and play the way he did uh, was pretty impressive. It's a lot. It's it's really hard, man, to play basketball when you have all those expectations on you. Uh, he did get off to a slow start, but there was a spur, I believe, in the third quarter. He scored nine straight points. And uh, he said, screw this, I'm going to take over. And he did. Uh, Defensively, he was a lot better. uh, But he still did get bounced around a lot, Um, you know, back and down. He needs to get stronger down there. Uh, Right now, he's he's a forward. To be honest, he's so damn tall. The the Spurs don't put him at center. But uh, listen, man, it's going to take time. I I see a lot of, you know, talk shows today. 
for example, oh, he's got to play center. He's got to play center right away. He's not ready to be a center yet because he's just going to get demolished down low. It's going to take some time, but uh, the Spurs are doing him right. I, I do I do agree of shutting him down. You don't want to get him hurt in summer league. You just want him to get a taste of what it's at least like a little bit of NBA competition. As you said, it's not a complete NBA competition. It's just a bunch of, you know, rotational players playing really in a glorified league. But still, it's nice to see him get some action. I was more impressed with his defense. There was a play on the outside boundary. He blocked a shot from the three-point line. Uh, he just he literally just raised his hand and completely blocked it. I thought it was pretty special. But it's pretty cool. Obviously, you see some flashes and glimpses of how great this guy can be. But I do agree. Putting these expectations on him is, is, is completely unfair. It's unnecessary, as you said. And what do you get out of it by saying that? Just let him play. Let him grow naturally. Um, he is going to be potentially the face of the league. Let him grow. Um, we saw of Giannis. No one obviously had the expectations Giannis would be this great, but guess what? We let him grow into the player he is, and now he's one of the best in the league. It's so hard. You're right. There's so many great players in this league. It's going to take time. Um, these un unrealistic expectations is, is ludicrous. Maybe it's not unrealistic, but to put these expectations day one before he's even played an NBA game uh, in real life is kind of crazy, man. You know, it's it's a lot to ask. E even, like, with a four-year marker, if, if you watch how – slow he is to show and recover outside on the perimeter getting back to the big man he's supposed to be guarding you know one of the uh initial tests that should come and be it should be his uh like welcome to the nba moment should be you know guarding pick and roll with anybody like in the conference i, I i'm not sure when he has to see the uh the lakers for the or the the regular spurs uh lakers quote unquote rivalry but you know it will not be easy for him to stop the LeBron James, Anthony Davis pick and roll or the Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic uh, uh, screen and um, screen and pop threat that they got going on there. Like he, he does not move laterally well enough to my eye. And, you know, there was some plays that on the perimeter he did well, like and I thought like the offensive player actually did the worst thing you could do in front of a guy like Victor with someone with the length like he has, which is yeah. just a shot in front of him what, what I thought would have been the right move is to uh like try to zigzag around him you know like do some try to be elusive with the dribble not just pull up because it, it what I think you know my my like my good friend Andy Roth has actually made this point teams like in the NBA struggle to gauge uh Nick Claxton's length on the perimeter and that's why he gets so many of his blocks on the outside this is an astute point by my friend Andy Roth former AP by yeah. the way he when Banyama has the same gift in a stationary position the way to get around that is you know you put the ball on the floor and dance around him I didn't see too much of that I didn't see you know the opponents in these two summer league games challenge him too much in pick and roll but that that's just what we have left to see at the next level but at least he was certainly much better on a Sunday night than Friday night, for sure. Yeah, you, you said it well. Um, listen, it, like I said, it's going to take time. When Minyama is obviously, you could see it, the talent's there. It's about, you know, unleashing it all. Uh, Craig Bobovich just signed that massive five-year deal for $80 million. Uh, who knows if he's going to coach that whole contract, but something interesting about it is he's also eligible to be the GM of the team. But uh, I think uh, Popovich will be around those five years as long as he's you know stays alive and he's healthy. Um, I think when Manal is going to be fine. But I agree, man. These these expectations, the slapping on him, uh, is completely uncalled for. And why why do that? I mean, just it's just completely unnecessary. I agree. Um, but look, when Manal played a lot better, uh, he did make a couple of threes. He did airball, uh, I believe, from what I remember, two threes. But uh, look, I mean, that's not the point. I mean, I saw a video the other day. They showed his one air ball, and then a lot of people were defending. Well, guess what? He scored 27 points. But look, the backlash was real. Game one, he really got a lot of criticism. And everyone's saying, this is the guy he hyped up for, for two, two and a half years, and he comes out and plays this way. Um, Mateo, when he goes into the season, because he is shut down, let me ask you that. Do you agree with the Spurs shutting him down for the rest of summer league? Yeah, like, you know, you, you saw him play well, like you, you you see in multiple performances, you know, you don't need to play him more often because this isn't the level of competition he's, he should be, you know, 
uh, measured against. It's obviously yeah. at the next level. What should be the initial focus from like now to mid October is you know adding some mass on his shoulders, maybe his uh, quads, hamstrings, uh, hip area. It, it, getting him stronger in general should be you know the biggest uh, priority. Also adding some some more post moves and you know. He's a young guy. I'm. I'm not saying he has very low. IQ. I think it's actually high because of his because of his passing chops. He he actually seems to be like a step ahead uh, with his mind. But he talked about the print like the methods and principles of the Spurs being a little different than Metropolitan's '92. And you know, get focusing and actually learning like a playbook is some real deal work. So you know, putting him to uh, work on that is not a bad thing to tell you the truth. Yeah, and listen, um, I'm just comparing their bodies and their builds. We saw Chet Holmgren last year was kind of like the same build a little bit, and this year he's got noticeably bigger. So you obviously can get bigger uh, in all aspects of that body. It's going to take some time, but now he's, you know, this is his job now. He's going to be uh, completely focused on being better as a, you know, as a basketball player and just be getting bigger. So I do think uh, you got to look at some of those comparisons. Obviously, Chet and, and him are completely different players, but – uh, build wise, and they're kind of the same. I mean, obviously, Wemmy's a little bit taller, but they have the same frame. So, uh, you know, seeing Chet getting bigger, uh, we could talk about him later as well. Um, I, I think, uh, there's some, you know, room for being happy. And, uh, listen, like I said, it's a project I agree of Wemby being shut down for the rest of the summer, or shut down, I should say. But, uh, look, they want to protect their, their, their asset, and I, I agree with it. And it's going to be fun to see what he does in the regular season, but. To anyone watching and to all the, the fans, just be patient, especially Spurs fans. Uh, it's going to take some time. This guy's not going to put up 30 points every game, uh, you know, year one. So it's going to take some time. But defensively, I do think he can make some massive strides. Uh, before we go, Mateo, do you believe with within the next, let's say, six years, he could have a legitimate chance to win Defensive Player of the Year? Or like I said, do you think those expectations are a little bit too high? You know, six years, you know, because he's 19 right now he's going to be 20 years old at some point in january early january when you're 25 years old that's like when your body is, you know stops fully maturing and you know you, your brain fully develops according to most scientific studies he has promise like as a as a drop big right now in that type of coverage he is very good and specifically like what that means is in like in pick and roll he is in the guy you know taking away the rim run from the opposing big man or the ball handler he is very good in this scheme when you got to bring him outside that's that's where he suffers a bit in six years six years is a little bit longer than four it's, it's of course it's two more but i think you know you're going to see more when, when you give them more time. Yeah, I, I I like this marker a little more. People might think, what's the big difference between, you know, six and four? To tell you the truth, a whole lot in, in, in the <laughs> NBA, seriously. Yeah. yeah I, Look, you know, around, around that time, so, sorry to cut you off, around that time, he should, you know, be starting to, like, really show what he's about. Yeah, agree completely. Look, I, I've basically said all I can say about Wemby. He's a phenomenal talent. We're not nitpicking the guy, but you also want to set some realistic expectations. I mean, to to say he's going to be the best player in, in three years, I think is kind of ludicrous. I mean, you have guys like Giannis, Luca, and Joel Embiid. Those guys are all forces of nature in their own way. Um, and I'm just naming three. There's there's obviously a lot of other great talent out there. So um, that's just – it's just – ludicrous man I, I really hate to say it. i mean he's a, a, a special talent but let's see let's see let's see how he plays the first year before we start at least you know throwing those things around but uh obviously the talent is there you could see it uh it's just can the spurs get completely out of it so uh before we move on anything any last words on women yama you know he has a a very good coach pop you know is uh a definitive you know top 15 but by the you know the vote some people say he's the top coach all time i don't know about all that maybe for sure uh top five but he's gonna be in a in a situation that like encourages you know like the right style of basketball and what i mean by that like i like talk about cliches like when harden was you know dominating by playing isolation which is you know almost like one-on-one -on -one play which is well, basically it's one-on-one -on -one play in houston and two from like 2018 to like uh, 2020. That's some boring basketball. And it's also, you know, very easily uh, deciphered because, you know, when the ball isn't moving, you know, 
the other the opposing defense understands what's going on and it's easier yeah. to stop playing in a in a system like the Spurs like historically they've always been high ball movement high screen so like this is the right you know environment for Victor for sure yeah well said man I agree um I mean to be honest, I couldn't think of a better place for him to go to in terms of lottery teams. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's not a big market. It's a perfect place for him just to grow and play basketball. And, uh, I mean, obviously there are a lot of eyes will be on it, but it won't be, you know, in a big market if he, if he, if he gets off to a slow start, say, boo, you know, this and that. So overall, I think he's fine. I think, uh, like I said, you just got to be patient, but, uh, you can see the talents there. So, um, yeah, man, it's going to be exciting to see. I mean, he's supposed to be the face of the league in a couple of years. Uh, we'll see, man. I mean, I hope I hope uh, that all pans out. But uh, I mean, those are really, really high expectations. So let's uh, let's uh, pump the brakes on that a little bit. I think that's what we're trying to say. Um, let's get to uh, the Heat Summer League, man. They've been a present surprise. Obviously, Orlando Robinson had 36 points. Uh, I don't think anyone saw that coming. It wasn't on my bingo card, that's for sure. But uh, look, Jovic has played playing well. He's noticeably gotten bigger. He's obviously worked a lot in the off, uh, really during you know practices and stuff. He didn't play much this season, but um, especially the playoffs. But he's been playing well. Obviously, Hakes has been playing well. He got. I don't think he played the other day. Correct? Am I wrong on that? He he only played in the game versus Boston. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but he looks like he can he can play. I mean, Bouye has been taking a step forward. But uh, who's so far impressed you in Heat Summer League? And is there any rotational players that you think have a shot of cracking the roster and actually contributing this season? I'm, I'm sorry. He played in the California Classic, not not, not in Boston. Pardon me. But to, to answer your question, I know where you were going. You know, the rotation players that, you know, are emerging from this Summer League team or, you know, of course, uh, the guy who was there already, Orlando Robinson. Yeah. Uh, he had 36 points in the game against Boston. It was uh, – had a little bit of a slower start in the game against Phoenix, but actually kind of got it going in the second quarter and in the third. Um, he is someone that should be or should definitely get a lot more minutes this year with, uh, you know, Zeller gone, you know, the team not uh, choosing to extend the qualifying offer to uh, Omer Yortsevin, another one, uh, Nikola Jovic. He only played in 15 games last year, Rob, and they, they redshirted him pretty much just as a G League prospect. And one of the immediate uh changes you can see when looking at him is his body like he's, yeah he's had to have gained like between 10 and 15 pounds to say the least and it's it's harder it, it, I, I may be tempted to say more because it's he's a bigger he's a bigger dude at, at 6 11 it's, it's harder for it to be more noticeable on a guy that big but he today he was awful but here's the thing he was playing with a bum ankle but here he is a very good playmaker. You you saw him getting down the floor quickly in transition after a defensive rebound. And he's a guy who is 6'11". In my wildest dreams, the Heat uh, eventually turn him into a new school version of Andre Perlenko. You, know, you may know him as AK-47. <laughs> what really separated him apart back in the day was his defensive prowess. Jovic has a long way to go, at least on that end of the court. But I do see intelligence, the way he kind of throws his body around like in the lane to at least cut defenders off sometimes, like at least in the elbow area. But an another one, you know, the the rookie Hawkins, when, when, when you saw him play, he hasn't played recently. He got like six, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, like at least 10 to 12 points just, you know, running hard on the break and uh, just and uh, just off the ball it was it, it, it told me a lot about him because you know you know he, he's someone who's just who's not a ball watcher you know if you saw him at UCLA you can tell he's got the best footwork in the draft but he's got you know different ways to skin a cat like he's not just going to be someone who waits for somebody to give him the ball and get to work yeah like, exactly he's, you know, he's someone moving and putting pressure on the defense without the ball in his hands I really like that another guy who was on the team last year Jamal Kane what really stood out about him uh per previously was his off ball activity exactly it, yeah lot, I agree and another thing he always picks up a um offensive rebounds and gets like two or four, four points on putbacks those are valuable in a make or miss league when games are decided by you know three or four possess or you know two or three four possessions nightly so th those are just some of the guys I may be missing one of them but I'm sure we'll get to them but th the Heat have some players and it's important you know to identify them because right now Max Strews is gone Gabe Vincent is gone and we haven't seen any you know progress aside from Cronin's uh, press conference on the Portland front with Damian Lillard. 
Yeah. Another one that's impressed me a little bit is Peterson for the Miami Heat. Uh, he's been playing pretty solid. I believe he had 13 points tonight. Um, wasn't that efficient, but look, he plays hard, man. I don't know if he's going to crack a rotation spot, but you know, he's, he's, he's a jack of all trades. He gets a couple of rebounds, a couple of assists. I mean, he's definitely a spo player for sure. Um, look, and when we're talking about these guys, we're just talking about what they're doing in summer league. It's really hard to crack, especially a Miami heat roster, but if there's any, ever an opportunity, it's going to be this year. Cause I think the Dame trades in inventable at this point. And I think, uh, look, there's going to be a couple of roster spots that are going to be open. I think a lot of this is going to be very competitive. I do think maybe two or three guys on this team have a real legitimate shot to at least get some minutes this season. Uh, I'm not saying Peterson's going to crack it, but he's definitely intrigued my eye for sure. Uh, I like his game. Uh, he plays hard, man. He's not afraid. He gets off the, the pick and roll switch pretty well. And um, look, he challenges the shot. He may not be the best defender, but he gets in your face most of the time. I like him. He's a pretty hard player. You know, specifically about here, Rob, it's it's so uncertain what the situation for this team is going to be like in yeah. the from now in the coming months. So and one of the potential scenarios is, you know, that the team gives up a whole lot for you, you know who and loses a lot of shooting. Yeah. Well, we've well, already lost a little bit already with, you know, Struess and Vincent, but someone like Peterson, he made three out of five triples tonight, you know, relocating on the perimeter, you know. They're going to need to find guys who fit that bill at a very low price. And, you know, exactly. he doesn't seem to be someone, you know, that's a bad candidate for that option. Exactly. Look, and I I, I, I really hate to say it all the time, but it's just the definition of a heat culture, man. You just got to get in there and play hard and, and you know, no BS guys. And these guys play hard, man. That's what I love about why, why the Heat draft all these players. They find guys that are no BS guys and play hard and, and, and can contribute in some way. And you're right. They're going to need Peterson's three-point shooting if he, if he cracks the roster. Because let's be real, man. There's going to be a lot of guys missing on this team once we trade for you-know-who. Um, it's it, And this is great for all these guys, man, because they're getting, you know, valuable minutes in the summertime where they can't really get it anywhere else. So um, it's going to be interesting to see. Was there anyone else that you liked on this team? That 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 played well tonight or recently, you know, Drew. We uh, we should mention Drew Smith, the uh, point guard on this team, around six three. He's, you know, quicker than I thought and a, a better shooter than than I expected. He should, could also be someone you know that they lean to because you know of his outside outside presence. You know, and they're also kind of thin at point guard. You know, Gabe Vincent. You know, was someone who was the understudy who ended up taking Kyle Lowry's job because, you know, Lowry's older, uh, I- injuries this season, but he was a very integral piece to the Heat's, uh, speaking of Vincent, historical run through the playoffs this year. And with him now gone, you know, you have to explore all options. And fortunately for the Heat, they've had, you know, guys playing well in this summer, these summer exhibitions. Yeah, I agree 100%. I, I think Kyle Lowry's days in Miami are potentially done. Uh, there's been reports that they're interested that they, you know, they looked at John Walsh private workout and and so on. Um, they got to get, they just got to get younger, man. I'm tired of, you know, all these old point guards. Uh, Dame's an exception, obviously. Um, but look, there's a real opportunity for backup point guard. I think there's a, and a, there's a real opportunity for backup center. As we talked about earlier, Thomas Bryant's there, but we, you mentioned last week about the defensive struggles he had. So there's definitely a couple opportunities for this team to get some real playing minutes and, uh, that's what I love about the summer, the summer league team, man. Minutes matter for the Heat, and uh, it's going to be fun to watch. But um, anyone else that that stood out to you? Yeah, as of tonight, well, tonight against uh, Phoenix, nah. But you know, I want to just stick real quick with Orlando. There are moments where like he, he looks robotic, and and sometimes where like it appears where like he gets hit checked like, around the post, and like he loses his equilibrium. <laughs> but he's someone who has made significant progress there was a move he made today where he he's um it wasn't a spin where he just caught the ball quickly and performed a, a left-handed floater I, that's how it looked to my eye I, yeah. I, I caught it quickly and you know that's that's some that's some good stuff man you know you, you don't want to see them just perform you know layups underneath the rim or, or by the side of it you know the floater is a is a tough shot to uh, get down yeah 100 percent, man um look like i said there's a couple more games they have to play but overall, um, I'm pretty intrigued. I like Jamal Kane. I think he has he played a couple games last year for the team uh, before he obviously the playoffs. He was on the bench, dressed in you know street clothes. But uh, 
I, I, I kind of potentially like him. We'll see, man. They have a lot of options. Uh, I will ask you this question. Are you surprised they didn't re-sign Yurtsevin? Uh, I mean, he's been this looming project for a couple of years. Uh, he really never got a chance to play at all. Um, they Essentially, they chose Orlando Robinson over him. So, I mean, with the price tag that Yurtsevin was, I, I think it would have been a low-risk uh, gamble for them. At least put him in summer league and see what he has one more time. But uh, do you agree with that, or do you think they should just cut their losses and move on? Well, you know, o- Omer was initially supposed to be a, a big part of the Heat's rotation this year. Exactly, yep. Emery serves correct. I, I think the last time they saw him was in sparse minutes next to Bam in preseason, and he and he got hurt, and he had to recover the whole year, uh, pretty much the whole year. And, well, I think the whole year, actually. And um, they decided not to bring him back. You know, I, I don't think it's, it's something that, it should uh wor- worry the fan base you know i will say this about omer hell of a professional incredibly nice guy you know i'll always uh you know remember like the kind of like the uh shakespearean scene i was witnessing like <laughs> i could even call it that you know at game five um when the nuggets won the championship the in the tunnel that uh leads to the locker rooms and uh, yeah. the press conference rooms you know there's a bunch of fans like you know, really fans who are you know connected to the players you know um behind this uh, uh like taped uh line or whatever you know like barrier and you know nuggets players uh personnel are walking and then at one point omer you know like are is already dressed with his luggage and like look is looking like he's seen a ghost and like walks through there and like it it almost felt like a section of the room or like the hallway got quieter, like as they noticed him coming by, you know, it, I, it's sad that he didn't get to develop this year with the team. They, they were, they were, they had expectations for him. I will say that I, I thought he could develop into a, a decent weak side shot blocker, but with, you know, all the time he missed, you know, with the heat trying to win now, Backup center, you know, is an important position. You kind of need somebody that's not going to be dead minutes behind Bam out of bio. And, you know, in, not pretty much playing a year, That that's a huge detriment to your development. The team right now is in win-now mode. I, it just was one of the losses that, you know, I guess needed to happen. Yeah, man. Um, look, you 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 said you hit the nail on the head on that one. I agree. It's unfortunate, but they, look, Miami's most of the time in must-win scenarios, and it's kind of hard to develop players, especially in the playoffs. I mean, obviously they could have used him, but uh, look, Spolster doesn't trust him, man. We saw that, and Zeller got the, a lot of the minutes, and this is the way it shapes out sometimes. I do believe someone's going to give him a chance. I, he's still unsigned, but I, I I find it hard to imagine that not one team's going to give him a chance. The guy's talented, so. Look, it's going to take some time. We'll see. But uh, look, that's it. With the, Any last news on the, the Heat before we move on? Yeah, yeah. In, in, in regards to Omer being unsigned, he uh, set a rookie record or a record for the Heat in his rookie season, you know, with uh, consecutive games uh, scoring or, excuse me, recovering at least 12 rebounds a night. He's a prolific, you know, rebounder. And yeah, I agree. Who could, could help a team. But, you know, right now he's just not in a position where he, he's going to help the Heat. Yep, hundred percent agree. Uh, let's get to a couple standouts in the in the summer league. Um, I'll go first. I'll give you one guy right off the bat. He plays for the Golden State Warriors. He's from Brazil, uh, and uh, I think you know who I'm talking about here. Do you or not? His name is. On. I hope I can pronounce his name right. It's Gui Gui Santos. So he's he's been pretty efficient, man. He scored 19 points his first game, 18 points his second game, a couple of rebounds and blocks, but he's really efficient. I think he has a chance to really crack the rotation, man. Uh, last year he did p- play pretty well, but he was buried because he had so much depth. But this year he's going to get a real opportunity, man. Uh, he's young. He can rebound. He's hungry. Uh, I like him. I think he's going to be a solid player for, for um, you know, Golden State. It's pretty cool to see that he's from Brazil and not many uh, Brazilian players. I remember the last one was Leonardo Barbosa from the Suns, and we also had Aaron Zinvirajal for a couple of years. But uh, it's always cool to see other countries, you know, getting some uh, players. So, uh, he stands out to me. I like his game. I, if I uh, if I recall correctly, Nene Hilario was is also from Brazil. I I only caught a little bit of Gui, 
you know, he seems like he's got some promise. You know, you do like his size, you know, at six eight. You know, the Warriors uh need guys or uh with around that stature to to play behind, you know, Andrew Wiggins, you know, if if he were to make the team. But, you know, Rob, one of my standouts is someone who to uh my understanding was someone the the Heat really liked all of last uh, collegiate basketball season. Obviously, they, they didn't take him in the draft. He was taken 16th uh, overall. But, you know, he's now a Utah Jazz. Keontae George. Oh, yeah, this, of course. This young man is spectacular. I, you know, originally, I, I, well, from what I saw in college, I saw a, like a taller Darius Garland. Darius and over in Cleveland is like 6'1". Um, Keontae is 6'4", and, and is a little different at off guard. But, you know, some yeah. of the things I saw, the way, you know, their body moved when they put their, the ball on the floor looked similar to my eye. But why I think Keontae is a, a very special player, and not just rookie, a, a special player going forward is, you know, he's, he's polished as a scorer. So, you know, he's such a polished scorer. You know, he can create separation without the help of a teammate. And with his shoulder feints, it seems like, you know, defenders bite on it and they lose position. And he just makes a quick beeline to the basket. Or he's also very good off the catch and shoot. He is someone who I think has a lot of promise to even be the rookie of the year. You can find a good price on him on FanDuel, at like plus 11,000 right now. Actually, oh, no, wow. it's plus 11,000 before that game. It's plus 8,000 right now. For, forgive me. I'm a, I got a little ahead of myself, but he's someone who's excellent. Jabari Smith from Houston, another one who had contributed a, a game winner and, you know, 71. Yeah, points. what a shot that was. You know, he is someone who reminds me of Bam Adebayo on the defensive end, but offensively, he may be a little bit more evolved as a, uh, entering a second year player because bam it, it never takes threes this guy is someone who takes like five a game you know jabari smith jr is someone with serious defensive intelligence length and you know get, getting stronger i i think he's really going to be one of the best centers in the league going forward well not immediately but like in the future yeah man um uh, i love his game I, I honestly i'm surprised he dropped the 16 there was a there was some reports he could go in the top 10 uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest, man. The Jazz have really stepped up their rebuild. They've done well in the in the uh, Donovan Mitchell trade. They basically got Walker Kessler for free um, in that return for Gobert. He's like another version of Gobert. I mean, dude, they got Lori Markinen, who's an All Star, who really took leaves and bounds this year. Jazz are doing something special. They got the kid out of UCF uh, who's showing some promise. Um, overall, Collins. yeah, yeah. Well, John Collins out of Atlanta too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's another one. So, yeah. I mean, they're obviously rumored in the Dame trade. I think that doesn't fit their timeline. But overall, Danny Ainge is doing a pretty good job over there. They got boatloads of picks and young talent, which is exactly what you want in a rebuild. I remember they also have Colin Sexton there, too. So I agree. I love that pick. Um, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be a little boring here. But I thought Scoot Henderson in the limited time that he played, dude, after watching 15 minutes of this guy, I think he really has it, man. I think he's going to be a really good player in this league. Uh, the shooting needs to get better, but he can go by people so fast. His dribbling is off the charts. His passing, his eye, his awareness for the game is really, really impressive. Uh, the shooting needs to get better. Defensively, it needs to get better. But look, he only played 15 minutes, and then he had that shoulder injury. I believe he's going to be out the rest of summer league. But uh, my instant reaction is, man, I, the Charlotte Hornets, dude. I, I, I I'm not going to give up Brandon Miller. He's he's been playing better of late. I still think he's going to be a good player. But man, it's uh it's kind of hard to fathom that they, they, they passed up a guy like this so far. It's still great. It's way early, but I'm pretty impressed with Scoot Henderson, man. You know what? It, I, this probably doesn't mean anything, but I, I like about him that, you know, the first play of the game, uh, the Thompson uh, brother uh, had the ball. He broke inside the lane, found someone on the baseline and, and immediately set a screen so he could take a, a shot um, a little bit uh, to the left side. Um, then on the next possession, Scoot Henderson uh, broke it down on his dribble and took a jump shot scoring. It's like, all right, I'll one up you right back. I, <laughs> I love, you know, like the gamesmanship he had. I love, you know, he's very strong, very fast, you know. He Arguably plays... the best athlete in the, in the draft, honestly. You know, like, 
I, I, I probably, you know, sh should, you know, be able to say definitively, but, you know, he, he is exceptional uh, to, to say the least, but um, I, I don't think he will play again in, in the summer league. You, you've, You've already seen him kind of ball already. I agree he, with with all these top dogs. You, I, sorry to cut you with all these top dogs. What's the reason? You know, no, no, yeah, yeah, of course. Like you know, you don't need a player to have like a a great field goal percentage and a, a twenty five and thirty piece in summer league for you to be like, hmm, okay, he's legit. Let, let's you know rest him. You know, what what does the eye test show you? Does does he have the explosion? Is he able to you uh, you know? Uh, put pressure on the defense by leaving a defender behind him and forcing a help defender to come over to him and leave a teammate open. I, I see him do these things. He, he seriously, when he was going inside the um the paint, he was drawing help off the corners and they were completely exposed. So he is someone who is going to be a problem going forward. And you know why I why I can say he will be quicker than someone like well Banyama. It's because you know. Uh, a guard you know they're they're much smaller they they move much more freely and you know they got the ball in their hands they can be you know the decision makers you know big, big men are like i've said this many times before are like wide receivers in football dependent on the playmaker to get you the rock you know you start to get better the more you have it in your hand and a guard like scoot will have that opportunity yeah man uh completely agree with what you said my la there's a couple more but my last guy i want to touch on i'm sure you would appreciate this uh, it's Hunter Tyson from the Denver Nuggets. Have you got a chance to watch him? Uh, not, 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 not too much, but, but a little bit. Go, go with what you go on. Yeah, no, he scored 21 points. Uh, his three point shots electric, a couple assists, a couple of uh, blocks. I mean, defensively, he's pretty good. I honestly feel like the Nuggets found a little bit of a gem here, man. They, as we saw, we, they made a trade uh, a couple weeks ago for uh, you know, future first and a couple seconds, but uh, look. They need they need to get as much talent as they can because they can not really upgrade the roster with with cash and they they might have found a gem here man Hunter Tyson is getting a lot of noise in the summer league he's playing pretty well so for anyone watching at home or is a fan of summer league I, I suggest you check him out because I believe he's going to play every game in summer league. You know this um this kid out of Clemson, he is definitely a project and you know the Nuggets I, I think have a very good developmental staff one of their their guys that. They've been working on behind the scenes. Didn't get too much playing time this this last campaign, but he, he's starting to show a lot of improvements. Is their big man Zeke Naji? You know, he oh. is someone who guards the inside and the outside. Super physical, lob threat. He is someone that you know, you know, wor working behind the scenes with the staff is what's uh, paid dividends for him. I could envision the same type of stuff with uh with Tyson, but I haven't got been able to catch too much of him but you know they did use a, a second round pick on him a, a high second round pick on him I, i'm someone that you know doesn't think that those uh selections are necessarily worth garbage you know in this day and age they're probably going to be worth a whole lot more i agree yeah so th this is a this is a nice player and you know it's 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 good that you know he, he's playing well with this considering you know integral role player bruce brown leaving to uh the indiana pacers in the offseason yeah well said man um before we move on any last words on any other summer league players you want to mention or give a shout out to well you know i i, I really like Keontae. like uh real quick on him again um our guy at the network five reason sports greg sylvander had been um reporting this i want to say as far back as like february that he was someone the heat really like i think as a rookie you will see very quickly and i i think he has a serious chance to win rookie of the year for all you betters out there and he may not even be a starter i, I think it's because he's gonna at least get around 25 27 minutes a game colin sexton may be in front of him maybe not maybe it's it's uh um Keontae and clarkson in the starting rotation but he is someone that is a, definitely a a high uh you should be a high usage offensive weapon. So for the betters out there. And the most okay. important part about that is I believe he's a guy that's going to play 65 games or more. Uh, remember, I mean, you gotta, you, Wemby is obviously the, the, I mean, a landslide favorite, but as we talked about last week, 65 games is, is a pretty big benchmark now for these awards. So uh, there's a new rule. You got to play that many in order to win. So that might be a very good bet. You mentioned last week, Hakez is another one. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give you some more along the way, but I, I really love that pick as well. 
All right, let's get to uh, the meat here. Obviously, everyone wants to hear, talk about Damian Lillard here. So Joe Cronin had his press conference today in Vegas during Summer League, and uh, basically he reiterated, reiterated that, uh, look, there's no sense of urgency in sending you know the franchise greatest player, according to him, that, uh, look, if it takes months, it takes months. Uh, he, he doesn't care what the timeline is. And the most important part is he has not spoken to Dame since uh, he's requested a trade. Uh, I'm going to give my thoughts on it. You know, I'll go first here. Here's, here's my thoughts, man. I think this guy's just putting his ego forward. I think he's trying to get as much value as he can. Um, it makes zero sense for him to be on this team, the start of the season, especially with the way Scoot Scoot's playing. Look, you have a new generation move on. You have Shaden Sharp. You have Scoot Henderson. You have Infernee Simmons. You have a bunch of young guys on that team that you want to develop. Jeremy Grant's there. He's the veteran guy, but it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, this is really a cloud over the the Blazers, and and it's just making Dame more pissed off. Uh, I there's reports that he's not going to show up when the season starts. Um, I think Cronin is really getting ahead of himself here. Look, he's trying to get the most value he can, uh, but uh, to to come out and say something like this, I think is a little bit ridiculous. I mean, he's just being stubborn. Uh, look, you know these GMs, man. They all have their ego hat on. We see of Danny Ainge. We see of a lot of GMs. We see of Daryl Morey. It's all a game between a game. Um, but, uh, look, those are my thoughts. Um, I think he should be a little bit more open-minded. Obviously, when I get the best deal for one of the the best players in franchise history. As you mentioned last week, I kind of agree with you. Clyde Drexler and, and Bill Walton have some things to say about that. But, listen, this is one of the best players they ever had. They want to get it right. I don't blame them on that part. But, I mean, do yourself a favor and try to get some value and just move on. It's good, good points. You know, I'm kind of seeing through excuse me, Cronin's uh, nice guy act. You know, he, he's saying he he wants to do right by Dame, but you know, there's always the but, and and the but is, uh, it's hard for the to do that and right by the organization at the same time. He said those things are unlikely, and everything you know that he said should indicate that like they are trying to play hardball with this. I I truly don't know if. Uh, Dame would um, uh, not come to camp if he was traded to like a team he did not like. If if like let's say he was still around, like come training camp for the Blazers, I I, I think he would show up. I don't think he would you know do that to them. I think he would make it super uncomfortable. But what the mistake I think Cronin is making is he he's he's trying to hold out for a better deal and potentially making this balloon expand and and pop and have serious consequences. The, the, the problem with that is Dame's agent is soiling the market because any team he gets the hint that is interested, according to reports, he's calling them and telling them to, you know, go away. This is devastating to the interests of the Portland Trailblazers. And at the end of the day, there is going to be just one team, like we've all been saying, you know, the Miami Heat, you know, holding a bag or, you know, obviously they got probably got to get another team involved because of, you know, the situation with cap and, you know, assets. But it, it's them all along that, you know, is there for the deal to be made with and, you know, just a waste of time, you know, with this whole this whole process trying to, to find somebody else to, um to give you these assets to take on a disgruntled player it's it's <laughs> it's very foolish because like you know dis disgruntled players historically do not give their full effort and are coach killers i'm not saying dame is like that but you know like that has been the case like who would want to risk such a thing especially giving up first round picks in this day and age so like no like cronin is making a huge mistake eventually i believe damian lillard ends up in miami but that dude is just weighing over his head. Look, I don't blame him to an extent. You want to get as much value as you can. No matter what, they're going to lose this trade because they're not going to get, you know, a KD package back or a Gobert package back or, mm -hmm. you know, some of the other packages that we've seen for recent superstars. I'm not saying Gobert was one, but, you know, the package they got back in terms of that. But, look, I, I agree with you, man. Um, I do believe, ultimately, Dame is such a professional that he would show up. But I agree. He would make it very uncomfortable. And why do you want to even put yourself in that situation – you drafted your point guard of the future in school. He's obviously shown potential. You don't want to get in the way of his playing time. Dame, Dame and him together, I don't think would work. It's just, you know, they're Dame's a ball dominant player and Scoot's going to want the ball in his hands to develop and get better for Shaden Sharp. I mean, Shaden Sharp will go to the bench. 
developmental wise, it makes no sense to, to drag this on. I, I would say maybe a couple more weeks he's in Miami. Um, and I'm, I'm not being a homer here. It just makes some the writings on the wall at this point. It's just a matter of who's going to get hero. How many first years blazers going to get, who's going to take on the salary dump contract. I think it's really coming down to that. But uh, look, we saw recent uh, pictures and videos of Damian Lillard in Punta Cana uh, in the Dominican Republic, living life. Uh, he's training hard. Um, look, it's just going to take some time. Joe Cronin's obviously trying to get as much value as he can, but uh, he's being a little bit stubborn, a little bit of jerk about it. Uh, basically saying, look, Dame doesn't run the show. I do. And I can, I can make this last as long as I want. And you're just not helping the fans. You're not helping the situation. You're not helping the team. Uh, and ultimately the city of Portland is ready to move on. I think as well. I mean, they, I think they finally, you know, face the reality that, Dame is going to be gone whether they like it or not. And, you know, why do you want to keep dragging this on? Just get some value. I don't think – this is not like a James Harden situation with Daryl Morey where if you wait, you're going to get a better offer. I think the offer is what the offer is. I mean, because Dame wants to go to one team and there's only so much you can give up. Like, for example, he's never going to go to Boston, but there's no chance in hell Boston's going to give up Jalen Brown. Why would you do that in order to get someone who's not happy? Or there's no chance the Nets are going to give up, you know, six or seven first-round picks for Dame – if you know he's not happy, I know he's boys and Mikel Bridges, but man, that's a lot of stuff to give up for someone who doesn't want to be there. So ultimately the writing's on the wall. He is going to go to Miami, but uh, I mean, he's just dragging this on for no reason, in my opinion. You know, now that it, it, everyone knows that his agent, uh, Godwin, has made those calls to try to dissuade teams. One thing <laughs> that I um, caught my ear from the Cronin press conference was that he said, what the rest of the league looks like matters. And I interpreted that as you don't want him going to a specific spot and specifically where is it he wants to go? You know, I I'm curious to see what is, you know, the next chess move by Dame's representatives, you know, of course, Goodwin to, you know, try to get the, the ball rolling because, you know uh, everything you know Cronin was saying you know he was saying I I failed Dame he had the whole nice guy act but listen I, I do not I am not falling for it for a second he is gonna be a shark for that organization foolishly until the well it, it, he has to for his job but I think he's a fool because he hasn't realized that a, a better deal isn't coming yeah uh, look, I mean, I'm, I think we're all at this point, everyone in the world is kind of exhausted talking about the Dame thing. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. There's only so much you can talk about it. But look, I do think Cronin is a big reason as to why this is obviously not happening. He's the GM of the team. But uh, I think more of this is more stubbornness than anything else. I mean, there's no reason not to to listen to calls and, and try to make your team better. I mean, to be honest, let's be honest here, man. For for a guy who's turning 33 years old soon, Five first round picks and a couple, uh, you know, salary dump players is not so bad for for an aging star. And there's obviously reports they don't want Tyler Hero. That's fine, but if they can get two first round picks for him and send him to, you know, Brooklyn or in a three team trade somewhere else, I mean, five first round picks and, you know, maybe a young player or two. That that's really nice, man. That's a pretty good return. I mean, I, I get you want to get the best deal possible, but at some point you also got to be a little realistic. For sure, you know, cutting Cronin a, a bit of slack in this situation. You know, execs like him answer to, you know, the, the ownership group. You yeah, know, sure. In this case, the Allen Trust. You know, I, I'm sure if they were like, if, you know, the per people above him were like, you know, just get it done, it, it would be. So, like, I think the, um, these moves a lot, well, the lack of moves align with, you know, the interests of, you know, organization, technically speaking. Um, but, well, they need to do this trade eventually because they, they can't go into camp or whatever. But uh, sticking uh, back to the point, this is, it's kind of, yeah, I'm actually kind of sick of, of talking about it. Yeah, it's, same. It's gonna turn, it might turn into a disaster. Really. Who knows? But, by uh, tomorrow, we might have breaking news that he's on the team. But it's just a matter of time. There's only so, this is the new era we live in with social media. Now you get increments of information on a damn trade, which ultimately leads to a trade to Miami or whatever destinations the superstar wants. I mean, we see this all the time. It's just a matter of time. Like I said, the writing's on the wall. There's only so much you could talk about. But it was pretty interesting today because Cronin came out and said that. And, and the, the the one that stuck with me most was, if it takes months, it takes months to end the quote there. I mean, it's pretty funny that uh, 
I don't believe that for a second, but uh, he's try- obviously you see what he's trying to do. He's trying to get as much value as he can. You know, I, I think he's also trying to like with the months quote, you know, uh, try to like take the heat off this path for them to like go look elsewhere. And like at the point where they're at competing for a title, there is no other player that they have their like reticles set on. It is Damian Lillard. His display isn't going to work. I, I get, you know, the, the uh, position to play, you know, hardball for the organization for the quote unquote best package, which is not coming. Of course. Yeah. Agreed. Um, any last words on that before we move on, man? Um, you know, I it, it sucks for Scoot Henderson, man, because, you know, it would be great to really learn from a veteran like Damian Lillard because legitimately a, a top 75 player, deservingly so, like, you know, by, by the voters. Um, I'm sure he could have learned a lot. And, like, and Dame's a great person. Like, I'm sure, you know, uh, Dame's qualities off outside of the court, you know, would have rubbed off. Well, would rub off on Scoot the longer he stays there. But um, you know, it's just I, I look at it as like a negative for like you know the players, the, the rest of the players, like losing Dame. It really is gonna suck eventually. Yeah, it is. I mean, and also this guy's a fan favorite in Portland. I mean, he's 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 beloved. He's one of the, like I said. He's probably the most loyal guy in sports the last 10 years I've ever seen. I mean, the guy just loves Portland. Uh, the guy just wanted to win. He didn't take the easy route out. He had numerous times he could have done that, and he stuck with it. So I really respect the guy. I think I know a lot of Portland fans do. I have a couple of Blazers fans in my life. They're not mad about the situation they want. I think a lot of Blazers fans just want Dane to be happy and accomplish something that he obviously can't do in Portland. It's pretty realistic. I think a lot of Blazers fans are realistic that they can't he can't really accomplish a championship there in his timeline. So, and plus they got Scoot Henderson. So I don't think they have much to complain about. So um, yeah, we're going to leave it at that. Let's uh, let's quickly, you know, transfer to uh, the, you know, James Harden situation. He has opted into his contract and he wanted to, now he's basically put it in Daryl Morris hand. he basically said, trade me to a team. My market's not what I thought I was. I thought I was going to get a max deal of Houston. Obviously that didn't happen. They got Fran Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks. Um, it's going to be interesting, man. Look, James Harden's still talented. He's com- completely reversed his game. Now he's a passer guy, gets a lot of assists. The, the points have gone down a little bit. I mean, you saw some scoring highlights in the Celtics series. He carried the team in games one and five. But uh, look, this guy is one of the most contradicting players in the league, man. He's asked for you know a couple of trades in the last couple of years. It's uh, it's pretty unheard of. So look, we, we saw him at uh, Michael Rubin's party. Uh, you know, giving hugs to Joel and B, Tobias Harris. If you ask me, I personally believe he's going to be back. Uh, Daryl Morey loves this guy. There's reports now he's already trying to convince him to stay. I don't see many teams giving up a lot of assets to get Harden. Maybe the Clippers, we'll see. But uh, do you really want to give up Paul George in return for, you know, James Harden? There's some reports that Norman Powell might be in play and, uh, you know, Terrence Mann and a couple first. You know, Daryl Morey, he wants a star for a star, man. He's not going to settle for less. And... If you ask me, man, I think Maury holds a lot of the cards here. So with that said, what do you think about the Harden situation? Do you think it's going to get resolved anytime soon? I don't think the Clippers should be interested if they, you know, ha- have to deal Paul. Like, I-, I think this, this one of the, uh, the negotiation points has to be like some type of uh, serious draft capital for, uh, c- coming back from the Clippers because, you know, what's the point in exchanging Paul George for, you know, uh, her, um, excuse me, James Harden. It, it, it doesn't make sense if, to lose a, a two-way player for an aging uh, pa- like passer, like you say, you know, someone who's losing a step or a little bit more of his step every year. But in terms of, you know, Harden's situation, I think it's a mistake for him to uh, I agree. leave Philadelphia. The, the more I think about it, you know, we, weeks ago when this, this news was breaking out, you know, I kind of envisioned it, but the more I, I thought about it, I, I don't like the taste of it in my mouth of Harden and Clipperland, you know, leaving a uh, one uh, fragile star and Joel Embiid to go play with, a, well, two more and Kawhi and Paul George just doesn't make sense, especially when you got the better coach now and Nick Nurse in Philadelphia over Teron Luke. Yes, they're both champions, but, you know, last year I was not a, a very uh, big admirer of uh, Teron lose efforts from the coaching staff. If, if you saw the Clippers last year, you know he actively, you know, soiled um, Norman Powell's chances of winning six man of the year with his yeah. bogus 
expectations. He trusted Marcus Morris Sr. way too much for some inexplicable reason when the dude is basically a zero. But, you know, James, sticking with him, Philadelphia is the better spot. You know, you got the continuity. You, you, you've you established a relationship with someone like Joel Embiid. The screen and roll you got with him is still one of the more lethal sets still in the league because of, you know, Joel's size, power, and, you know, quickness. But so I, I think it's a mistake to, you know, try to be homey hopping again. This only, you know, like at the end of the day, makes your resume look a little bit more unimpressive at the end of the day because everybody knows he's not doing this, you know, for like, because he wants to be happy. The dude doing it because he wants to win a championship. Yeah, man. Look, James Harden is is one of the most, you know, controversial players in the league I've seen in a while. Obviously, Kyrie Irving has the top spot, but uh, when James Harden's right and his mind's in the game and he really plays hard, he's a really he really is a really good player, man. He still has game. Like you said, he's lost a step. I think he's lost two steps at this point. But look, he's he's transitioned his game. He's a really good passer, man. Um, I th- believe he led the league in assists this year, correct? Yeah, he did. I mean, yeah, the guy, the guy, the guy. When he wants to, man, he still can give you whatever you want. The point, the points are not going to be there as much, but the guy can help you win a championship. I believe. I know he hasn't had the best postseason run, but I believe there's one or two more runs in him if he's completely dedicated. Um, but look. We saw Joel Embiid have an MVP season. James Harden was a was a big reason as to why. Uh, Tobias Harris, it's going to create space for him. I believe this is the year Tyrus Maxey makes a huge leap into potentially that second star for that team. Um, and look, it's one year. I know uh, Harden wants that big long-term deal, but I really don't see a lot of teams giving up a lot of assets, and then you have to give them that big money too. I believe his best bet to win a championship and to be in the best scenario is is with Daryl Morey, who, has, who he has familiarity with. And you know you can win with the Sixers. You just got to get over that second-round hump. And who would you want to ride with? And with arguably the best player in the league in Joel Embiid, who's coming off an MVP season. You got Nick Nurse there. He knows how to coach basketball. Will use his strengths to his advantage. I think I think, I think, think he really needs to take a better look at this, man. I think, I think you're right, dude. I think he's making a big mistake if he leaves. You know, and listen – a lot of negative stuff has been said about him. Some could argue that it's rightfully so. But, you know, uh, James Harden, to my knowledge, along with Russell Westbrook, there might be the only two players in NBA history to multiple years lead the league in scoring and other multiple years, you know, lead the league in assists. They are, well, he's still very good, but, you know, at the, at the peak of their powers, they were both remarkable offensive players. Yeah, of course. Sticking with Harden. You know, at this stage in, like, the NBA, Joel Embiid is a better player than Kawhi Leonard. He's a better player than Paul George. You know, personally, me, if, if I'm, like, the quarterback at the position pretty much James plays, I want to play with the, the more dominating figure on the court, you know, the one that commands more double teams. And, you know, Joel was actually – he had one of his more, like, uh, available seasons last year. So – it doesn't seem to me like a good idea. I know Kawhi um, uh, got, got over 50, but it was four fewer games than Paul George. You know, a lot of people were quick to, you know, throw out, you know, oh, Kawhi missed a whole bunch of games. You know, Paul didn't, you know, play that many more than him. So sticking in Philadelphia is the right move, especially when you got a, a better coach with a, a new philosophy and a new scheme coming in, especially like with what, what, um, his teams did on the defensive end, like especially with Kawhi, they were like, you know, really dominating the the opponents on the defensive end, especially like in the in the in the finals in 2019 when they they ran the box and won against uh, Stephen Curry, uh, in like in Game Six. That that was spectacular. I I envision like what kind of crazy defense could you run with Joel Embiid anchoring the middle? They could probably with in Nick in Philadelphia under Nick Nurse run like a spot zone. Like which uh, which is like a zone in the back line, or this one specifically a zone in the back line, but the guys up top playing um man to man. So th- there's a lot that could be done for Philadelphia if if Joel oh, I'm sorry if if Harden stays in my opinion because you know yeah, of course Chris Max is still there too. And worst case scenario, I think that this would be a win win scenario for both. Is Miro sits down with Harden and says, "Listen, let's play out to the All Star break." Let's play it out to the trade deadline. If you don't like what we have here, if Nick Nurse is not your guy, uh, I can have some time to find some value for you and potentially get that start and maybe potentially get Paul George here and you go to the Clippers, something like that. But I, I'll, I'll ultimately think 
that they're going to work their issues and he's going to at least be there for half a season more. And then we'll, we'll figure it out the trade down. Like, kind of like what he did with Ben Simmons, but I just don't see many teams giving up assets to get this guy um, along with giving him a boatload of money. Uh, that's just the reality the way I see it. You know, hopefully he comes to the conclusion soon that, you know, he's not beloved like he used to be. And, outside except for the place where he's currently at and you know I, I think it's a mistake for people like especially when they're you know past their best days like in in the league to you know go searching for the quote-unquote greener pastures you you may not realize that, that you're you're currently living in it when, until it's well too late you know i mean this is a guy who turned down three years 153 million from the nets dude um I mean, can yeah. you imagine, I, I, if you could redo that, I'm sure you take that in a heartbeat now. So it's cost himself a lot of money, man. Sometimes you see that, but it is what it is. Um, any last words on the Harden thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd like to see him there uh, um, uh, have another year. I, I wouldn't like to see him get traded. You know, for all his faults, there is, you know, serious whiz, well, court wisdom he could impart to Therese Maxi as a scorer. He, he's someone who has, you know, boatloads of potential. And James knows all the tricks of how to get to the foul line when you're attacking from like, in when you're attacking inside. So, you know, leave your knowledge for the next generation. Yeah. All right. Let's get to a couple of fan questions here. And then we're going to head on out. Uh, this one is, we're going to answer two today because we're running out of time. This one's from Poetic Lifestyle. What do you think about the betting odds for Jordan Poole to win most improved player of the year? The guy's going to get a ton of shots in Washington, and uh, the guy's still an elite scorer. Obviously, on defense, he's not the best, but offensively, he can really light it up. I feel like uh, he could help resurge the Wizards a little bit. I'll give you the first first one on this. I love this question because I actually posed it to a betting expert. And by expert, I mean someone who is limited on multiple sports books, the, the, the books limit his action. So with pool, he's a candidate, but here's the thing. He's someone who's, you know, averaged over 20 points a game. You're going to need something like at least six or seven points of improvement with, you know, his field goal percentage staying around the same mark or going up. But here's why Jordan is an interesting candidate. He seems to have gotten the short end of the stick with how the Golden State situation played out. If anybody remembers, punched in the face. You know, the perpetrator who afflicted this damage was really told to go take off for the weekend, Draymond Green, before coming <laughs> back. You know, totally killing chemistry, you know. I, I thought people were bugging when they were posting a bunch of pictures of Jordan not smiling in a wizard's uniform and like how his, you know, energy looks different. And, you know, enough of these pictures are starting to go around. You know, there, there, there may be a little something there because like in his uh, uh, previous photo shoots, like in previous camps with the Warriors, this man had a smile from like ear to ear. And, you know, I don't blame him. What, what Draymond did, I, I said back then, was a crime. He got knocked out. And, you know, Jordan wasn't treated with respect by the team. And now that he is somewhere else with a fresh start, I think he's going to ball the F out. I, I do like him to be someone scoring around 25 points a game. For him to be a candidate, I, like I said, he needs to improve in the scoring column, like or at least like six or seven points. I think he's going to be a 25-point-per-game score. So, you know, if, if you got some money to, like, you know, to blow and, like, he hedge some bets, Maybe Jordan Poole is the guy for you because last time I checked, he was like at plus 5,000 on FanDuel, and that's not too bad. Yeah, listen, I'm going to give it to you real simple. Kyle Kuzma returned. He's going to probably get the best defender every night. Tyus Jones is a pass-first point guard. Um, I really believe Jordan Poole is going to shoot a lot of shots. He's never saw a shot he didn't like. Um, I think he's going to be a really good player for them on, on offense. Defensively is another question, but this is not defensive player. They were talking most improved player of the year. Um, I believe that the defense can be a, a little bit better than most. I don't think he's as bad as people make him seem to be on def def defense, but offensively the shots are going to be there, man. I mean, Corey Kispert's a nice three point shooter, but he's going to get a lot of shots. And I believe I agree with you, man. He could be a 25 point per game scorer easily. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty good bet with those odds. You said it's plus 5,000, correct? It was a plus 5,000 when, when I saw it on FanDuel. Yeah. I'll have to double check, but yeah, I mean, if you got some money to blow or if you got some money to, you know, 
had your bet on, I would definitely put it on pool. That's a pretty good pick. All right. Go ahead. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh, I was I was done with that. You have any last words on that one? Yeah, I I love the point you made about you know uh, Kyle Kuzma being the first person to catch the opponent's schemes because Jordan is someone that you know is very active outside and he can play both ways, like off the catch and shoot and putting the ball on the floor. So I think this is a, a very good situation for him to possibly win the award and you know show the Golden State Warriors what they are missing. Yeah. All right, here's another question. Uh, this is from Gian, who's actually uh, with Five Reasons Sports as well. He's in the soccer department for Inter Miami. He uh, so represent. Uh, he asked a pretty good question. It's pretty long, so I'm going to read it slowly to, to to the viewers and you, Mateo. He wrote, "Jaime Hakes, Jovic, Duncan, Caleb. If two got to go in the Dane trade, who are you trading and who are you keeping, and why?" And then part two of that question is. Assuming Tyler is gone and taking into consideration how you answered question one, who what's your starting five next season with Dame? So let's go with the question first. If you need me to read it again, no problem. Give me, oh, if the, uh, I have to keep sure. one out of the three. So you have to, uh, JJ or Jaime Hakez, Jovic, Duncan, Caleb. If two got to go in the Dame trade, who are you trading and who are you keeping? So you got to keep two out of those four of Jovic, Hakez, Duncan, and Caleb. You know, to tell you the truth, I'm I'm gonna go with the young ones. I'm gonna keep. Uh, uh, actually, to tell you the truth, uh, wow. I'm stumbling here. I'm, you know, to, to hold on, hold on. Let me correct myself here. I I gotta. Caleb Martin is super integral to the team. He he is needed going forward. And but here's the thing: he could uh, test free agency next summer because Agreed. he's got a player, yeah. a player option. So if if you think you can seriously win it now, keep him. And I and I think they can go, go, going into next year. So I would keep him. And I would, uh, I'm gonna keep Jovic because they've already spent some time developing him with their staff. He's put on some weight. I think he's got some promise. I really love big ball handlers, man, because at six eleven, he is someone that actually like moves like a gazelle going down the hardwood, man. He, 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 I think is gonna be a tremendous uh, contributor to a, a championship team in the future. So I would want to keep them. Next part of the question. Uh, let me answer this first part as well i'm gonna zag i'm gonna zag man i'm actually gonna take the two young guys i want as cheap a contracts as you can get caleb martin's obviously arguably one of the best contracts in the league he's only making 20 million over the next uh what two one next season or two seasons it's very cheap regardless look i know caleb martin has played great in this postseason but if i can get if i can keep jovich and uh uh hammy hackes who showed some promise i'd rather do that because you also have a future as well uh, they're locked up for a considerable amount of time. And by the way, spoiler alert, I don't think Duncan Robinson is going to be in this trade at all. I, I really believe it's going to come down to, do the Heat want to keep Caleb or do the Heat want to keep the two young guys? I think Duncan's not going to be in, involved at all. Uh, I, I still think some teams don't want to take on the contract, but uh, Duncan's very valuable for this team, so I'm happy they're going to take him. So those that's my pick, man. I'm taking uh, Jovic and Jaime Hakez. Okay, excellent. Next, what's the next part of this question? So the next part of the question is, assuming Tyler Hero is gone, and taking into consideration how you answer question one, what's your starting five next season? Uh, I'll go. I'll go first before you go. So my starting five would be Damian Lillard, starting shooting guard would be Duncan Robinson. Uh, small four is going to be Butler. Uh, power forward it's probably going to be Kevin Love. Most of the you're going to see some switch ins and outs, and center is going to be Bam with uh, Jovic Hakez uh, coming off the bench along with probably. Lowry's going to be gone, so you're going to probably see a, a backup point guard, but I'm not going to get into that. that my starting rotation is going to be um, Damian Lillard, Duncan Robinson, small forward Jimmy Butler, power forward Kevin Love, and c- center um, Bam Adebayo. That's my starting five for next season. Okay. At point guard, you know, I'm just going to leave it blank for, you know, obvious reasons, you know, yeah. the, you know <laughs> the trade. And, but Okay. I will honor the rest of the question. At, at the two, I'm going to put Haywood Highsmith. At three, Jimmy, Caleb, you know, and, and Bam is the rest of my rotation. I, I wish I could tell you definitively, you know, that uh, I'm, I, um, that this is going to be Dame's spot. And I, I know I said earlier with one of my answers that eventually he'd be here. But I, I just feel like if I start doing this, I will be the reason to James. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. trust me, you don't want me to answer this question the way you want. But, okay, what's the next part? Uh, that's basically it. All right. You know, here's you the thing. To... Let, me, let, me, let, me read, let me reason with uh, the audience why I picked these these players. Um, 
I'm not sure. Well, if there is Lillard, you know, defensively, you want to be able to cover for him. If there, if there is someone else, you you, you want to be able to 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 do that too and have someone with size or, or, um, around. You know, really, regardless of who's at the one spot. Uh, Jimmy goes without saying. Caleb Martin. Um, I, I know he wasn't start um, starting much later in, in the season, but you know, I think he earned it with his play, and I think he'll actually take the spot in camp. He's um. I, I, I think he's someone that um could uh man the position for most of the season while um opposing teams uh get a good uh scouting report on the team and by the time the playoffs roll around when the team roll a separate rotation that really screws up whatever the other team had in, in mind you know Caleb Martin would ball from the bench you know um bam goes without saying him at, at that spot but I really like Haywood Highsmith and, and Caleb Martin for their defense in this lineup. It, it's going to be a very poor shooting one, but the um, the defensive capabilities, they might be actually good on the break for a change. I love me some Highsmith. By the way, I totally forgot. Uh, Josh Richardson could potentially slide into the three and, 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 and J Butler at the four. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to rule that out either. I could potentially see Butler playing the four and, and Richardson at the three. You know, to tell you the truth, I could potentially see him playing the one in certain situations. I, I, I love how you – I'm really gra uh, glad you you reminded me and, and the audience of, of Josh Richardson because he, as like a secondary playmaker, can do some things. He He's not going to, you know, operate an offense to, you know, the level like of Kyle Lowry. Yeah, but sure. He can do some things as like a spot starter. So that is that is not a bad option in case of emergency, yeah. Josh Richardson. All right, should we give the fans what they want and, get, and, and one more question before we head yes. on out of here? All right, let's do it. All right, this is from Leo Table. He sent a question. Excluding a Damian Lillard trade, as of right now today, should the Celtics be the betting favorite to not only make the NBA Finals but win the championship with the Porzingis trade? Um, I'll let you go first. No, they should not. The betting favorites should be the Denver Nuggets. They have the best player in the world with the best supporting cast around them. Right now – uh, the best one of the best defenders in the world. Wherever you have Bam Adebayo, I don't, I don't think he could be outside. You know, top five. Nikola gave him fits, and he is as about as good as it gets in the league. So, gu guarding someone like the Joker and with all the weapons he has seems borderline impossible. To tell you the truth, man, all those games the Heat lost were all winnable games, but they were you know moments of truth where Nikola and the rest of the guys, you know. Just took it to another level, you know, started um, to, uh, hope, man, so I'm sorry, um, forcing stops and, you know, hitting huge baskets. Um, I, I really like the Denver Nuggets to, you know, be the betting favorite, man. I I, I can't see the Celtics. No, I'm sorry. I 100% oh, agree with you. Of course. 100% agree with you on that one. I still think that the uh, Suns should be the betting favorite. All right, not the Suns, the Nuggets. However, with the with the with the Celtics, listen. Here's my issue with the Celtics: Joe Mazzulla has to prove himself that he's the guy at the coach. But people are just assuming that Porzingis is going to be completely healthy the whole season and in the playoffs. That's a big ask for him. He's only played 65 games, uh, more than I think once or twice in his career. The guys had nagging injuries left and right. The, if 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 healthy, if I know that I'm going to get that many games out of Porzingis, I think there's a legitimate chance to to be had and to talk about the Celtics team, but uh, the inconsistency of Jalen Brown, who still has not signed an extension yet, is still a question for me. Tatum at times has been inconsistent in the playoffs, but uh, as a unit together, I mean, it's pretty lethal, but uh, I still have to give it to Suns. Jokic is such a, is just such a great player, man. Uh, he makes everyone better and, and you're going to get open shots all the time. So yeah, I'm going to go with the defending champs. I know it's a boring answer, but it's really the truth in my opinion. Yeah, no, no doubt. And Rob, you know, it can't be, you know, underestimated the confidence and you know the swag that defending champions come out with the following season you know once they have that you know burden of expectations wiped off their shoulders like I think back to you know the Golden State Warriors in 2016 I'm not you know implying the uh uh, uh if, um the new Nuggets next year are gonna win 70 games or you know maybe even 60 but you know they may be even you know tougher to be and this is even with losing Bruce Brown because they they've done this before you know like they 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 know how to beat everybody Christian Brown 
will be someone as good as Bruce Brown. So yeah. they, they are stacked yep. everywhere. That's it for the questions. Um, you can reach Mateo at uh, Mateo Mayorga. That's your Twitter, correct? Underscore Mayorga. Yeah, Mayorga 23, senor. Gotcha. You can get me at Robert underscore Bentulin or MIA Sports House. It's in my link in my bio. Uh, Mateo, like always, we'll be back next week. We're going to do this twice a week. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, and the Five Reasons Sports YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for the support. Appreciate it. And uh, Mateo, thanks for coming on, like always, man. Gracias, señor.